Well, hello there and welcome to the Power of Your Mind podcast. You are listening to episode number 206. And I just did something really funky with my screen here. There we go. <laughs> so I couldn't see where I was at. Um, so anyway, you're listening to episode number 206. I'm Victoria Gallagher. I am the law of attraction hypnotist, number one bestselling author of practical law of attraction, align yourself with the manifesting conditions and successfully attract your desires. I'm also the founder of hiptalk.com and hypno cloud apps, which gives you access to over 500 hypnosis recordings right in the palm of your hand. So be sure to download that app from the app stores. And today I am speaking here with my co-host comedy hypnotist, Jim Kellner. Welcome. Hello. 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 Hey, Victoria. How are you today? I am. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. And, but you know what? I think today we're going to talk about um, something that, you know, cause we always say I'm doing fine. I'm doing good. Right. right? And, uh, and sometimes we have to say that, or we feel like we have to say that, but you know, we might have other things going on that, um, you know, maybe you're not doing so good <laughs> at all <laughs> times <laughs> at all times. So we're going to just chat, you know, but, uh, how are you doing? How are you doing? fine. <laughs> you know, uh, there's a lot of things. So, you know, it, it's interesting if we, if, you know, it's one of the things that I, so first of all, uh, things are going pretty marvelous in a lot of ways, doing a lot of shows. If you're out there, come check me out. Um, if I'm in your area, I don't know when I'll be in your area, but if I'm in your area, comedy hypnotist, Jim Kellner. Um, so it's, it's, it's funny. You, um, we talk about this fine thing. I think one of the things that I find as a, as a helper, as a healer, you know, as you, as you will, um, is that sometimes I'm afraid to sh show, um, my weaknesses. And, and in fact, it's interesting because in my, my new book that, that'll be coming out, um, I just had my first meeting with the editor. Yeah. And so in, in one of the, in one of the things there, I said, um, I don't remember what thing it was I was talking about, but I said, um, I said a problem that I once had, and actually I'm still dealing with it to a certain extent, uh, blah, blah, blah. And she said, Oh, no, you're the expert, you can't still have that problem. And I'm like, well, I kind of feel like I'm a work in progress. But, but I guess so. Uh, I don't know, what is your what is your take on that? I mean, are you perfect? <laughs> I am, you must I, be, I, right? <laughs> you know, I, I get up, you know, on time every day, I eat a perfect <laughs> diet every day. I, um, you know, I don't have any problems. As a matter of fact, all my problems went away the day that I became a certified hypnotist 22 oh. years ago. And I haven't had a problem <laughs> since. <laughs> awesome. Everybody should go become a certified hypnotist. All your problems evaporate. Exactly. You know, and it, it's, it's really a great point because we, as the coaches, as healers, whatever you want to call ourselves professionals, um, you know, we get, have all this pressure that's, I believe put on us to look like we have got everything figured out that there's no bad days, that there's no stress. And I got to tell you, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a hard thing to try to live up to, to like, look, be perfect all the time. And so, yeah, I have, I have my, I have my days just like, I'm, you know what, if we're, if we're being really transparent, I'm having one of those days right now. Really? I'm actually having one of those days. So prior to us doing our uh, recording, I had a meeting with my app developer and, you know, after the money has already uh, changed hands, um, oh. we have uh, a little breakdown about what is going to be part of the scope of work. Like I had, a, I, I had read this document multiple times and um, I read it one way and it was written, yes. it wasn't, it wasn't very clear. <laughs> It wasn't very clear. So prior to this, you know, I had a little bit of a breakdown, um, you know, with, with my developer. And then from there, I get on to, um, I get onto Amazon and I look at my reviews and I got a three-star review on my book. Oh. And, you know, 
Um, and it was just this book. Oh, I mean, they might as well just called me the LOA Gestapo because they're like, this book is not any fun. She, she wants us to do all this, these worksheet, there's worksheets. <laughs> you have to do wow. actual work. <laughs> it's not oh, any fun. <laughs> so, you know, you this, know this... go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was just going to say this reminds me of those, you know, I mean, if, if people have, have listened to, to the episodes we've done together, I talked about a couple of people that I knew that had thought you could just sit and meditate and everything would just come to you, right? So it kind of reminds <laughs> me of that. So that was, I guess that was, that was their experience was like, that was I don't their just sit and meditate, I have to do yeah, some work. Yeah, they just want to have fun. And, and you know what, I mean, I'm always up for so I, I'm always up for, uh, for feedback. I think that mm -hmm. it's important that we take all of that as ultimately as helpful feedback, but when you're like hit with it, um, it can kind of take you down a couple of notches and, and because, you know, we all want praise. We all want approval. We all want to feel like, Hey, this is the best book. And, you know, and it's perfect. You know, you're going to get a perfect five-star review every time. And it's just expecting that out of your book and expecting that out of yourself that you're going to put out a five-star uh, review on yourself every day. And you're going to perform up to five stars every day. It's just an unrealistic expectation that, uh, you know, that we have on ourselves. And so, um, you know, I do, I do take the feedback that like, okay, well, maybe what they're saying is like, make the book, you know, for my next book, <laughs> make it more fun, you know, add some fun into it, you know, and balance that out, you know, and maybe, you know, some, some people are just not into wanting to um, work you know, work as hard or make the work a little, seem a little bit, you know, funner. I don't know. So <laughs> feedback <laughs> taken. I mean, how about no, you though? Well, I mean, that's, you know, it's, a, it's, it's funny because, you know, I think, uh, you know, like I, I want feedback, but mostly I just wanted if it's good feedback. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> like, you so know, so many Go yeah. Ahead. So many times, like I've read, like, oh, you know, let me, let me read this to you. I've had, you know, um, so, a perfectly well right. constructed uh, sales copy or a letter mm -hmm. or something. And I just want to read it to my husband. And all I, all I'm looking for is for him to say what that is great. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Exactly, yeah. That's perfect. Exactly. Oh my God. Thumbs I could have said it better myself. <laughs> Yeah. Right. But then you say you read it and it's like, well, blah, 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 you know, and you start getting into like the, the feedback that the critiques and the things that you right. don't want. <laughs> I can I can relate to that so much. And um, it's funny because when I when I met with the editor today, there was a part of me that was like, OK, I, I know it's going to be because I've got I've never this is my first like solo book, professional book. Uh, there's some rough spots. But on the other hand, I wanted to just go, oh, my God, this is genius. What, you know, there was, but the great thing, there was a little bit of a mix of both. So <laughs> there's definitely some room for improvement, which is great, because if I didn't have the editor, I just put this out there. And um, there's a lot of people that would go, oh, no. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, you know, and that's right. So, you know, we have to look at these the negative things, I believe, um, as lessons, you know, or as areas for improvement or areas to ultimately to learn from, because I think we're all no matter what stage, no matter how many credentials you have, no matter how much you learn, no matter how many certifications you get. And I think part of, uh, you know, like the whole imposter syndrome, like with, you know, people who don't sure. put themselves out there. Well, the reality is that you are going to get criticized sometimes. I think that they don't put themselves out there for fear of that rejection. And yeah, I got to tell you, I mean, you know, it doesn't ever go away. I don't care how long you've been doing that there are going to be those times, it doesn't happen all the time, um, that you're going to get rejected. Now I can pull back from this situation. I can pull back and I can look like, I think sometimes I think to, um, you know, to fix that, that what do we, what do we, what can we do when we are letting these things uh, run our vibration or run how we think? Well, we got to look back, like, you know, you've got that one client out there that, you know, just 
you know, hasn't, hasn't been getting the results that you wanted, you know, but like, look at all the thousands of other clients, you know, right. look at the positive, um, you know, the, that one review or the, the few bad reviews. Well, look at all the thousands of positive reviews that you've actually gotten, or you have that, you know, that one bad day of, uh, you know, not getting out and going, you know, and, and doing your, your run or your exercise or, or whatever it was that, you know, you're kind of coming down on yourself for that. You're getting that negative feeling about. And I think, you know, the, the key to that, you know, is to, you know, is, is really to, to learn from the situations. They're all here to teach us something, but then to, you know, pull ourselves back and up and, and to start feeling good again is really, you know, more than more likely than not, you've had far more, far more positive situations than you have negative. Yeah. And, you know, if you think about it too, like, um, as, as we know it, as you, if you're in any kind of business where you get reviews, you know that there are far more negative reviews per per you know per time than there are positive. People don't go out of their way to leave a positive review. People will go out of their way to leave a negative review. You think about restaurants you go to, right? I mean, how many times do you get up from a great restaurant and actually go on Yelp and, and leave a review? You know, not very often maybe, but if it's really bad, you're, oh, I can't wait to, before we even leave the restaurant, maybe you're putting that two stars, you know? Isn't that funny because, it, it, those negative experiences seem to be the ones that prompt people to, because we're, people are so driven to complain. People yeah. would, would much rather say something negative than, than they would positive. So that even goes to show, I mean, you know, I get, I would say, um, for, for my book, I mean, probably you can look at the number of reviews that a book gets and for every review that a book gets, there's actually been a hundred purchases behind those reviews. I like bet, maybe yeah. one yeah. out of 100 people actually review the book. And so, yeah. um, you know, when you look at, I don't know, like 800 of those, um, 880 <laughs> reviews or however, 823, uh, 823 reviews today. If you look at like the fact that 800 of those are positive right. <laughs> and 823, you know, and, and 23 of them are negative, then probably behind that there, and, and people are, like you said, more inclined to leave a review. If it's been a negative experience, they're much yeah. more inclined to leave a review if it's been a negative experience. So you have to give a lot more weight to those, those, uh, positive reviews. So you can use something like that, you know, looking at just looking at the positive to really help you to, um, you know, to get back up again and to, to feel, to feel better about, about yourself again. Yeah. I think, you know, there's far too many people in, even in our industry, um, that are just so, hyper focused on you know what are people going to think whether it's their colleagues i used to think that you know i was like oh what are my colleagues going to think i put up a blog about whatever and i've only been doing this for a couple of years you know you know a decade ago or things like that and, and you know being afraid of that 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 bad feedback and um and so it keeps you from doing things and really and this is what i found too um in fact i was talking to somebody a while back and they wanted to start doing a makeup reviews um you know mm -hmm. on youtube uh -huh. but they're like but i only have my iphone and i don't have the right lights and i don't have the right camera and all this i said but you got to start somewhere no 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 if i'm going to do it i have to do it this one way or otherwise people are... but you have to start you really do and if you look at a lot of people like their first videos or their first books even or whatever you're going to find a lot of stuff that wasn't that great and it really just took them time to get better so part of the process of getting great is sucking at first <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my God. Absolutely. And you know, it does, it doesn't matter what you're doing. I mean, whether like you're a man that is, um, you know, trying to get, you know, go on, go on a date. I mean, how many people, how many women, um, you know, do you have to ask out sometimes before you get a yes? 
or, you know, you're, you're going out there trying to get that, that first job out of college. Um, you know, you got to put out a lot of resumes, a lot of applications, go on a lot of interviews and, and, you know, you have to, you have to, you have to practice, you have to practice all of these things before you get really good at it. And, and you have to be, you know, writing your first book. I mean, I had no idea. I kind of expected when I wrote my first book that honestly, I was really surprised at how many five-star uh, reviews. I, I mean, I really was, I'm not trying to like toot my horn yeah. or anything. Like I thought, you know, that's my first book. So I've got to like, just be willing to put myself out there. This is the mm -hmm. truth for me. This is the way I believe that this works. And, you know, this is my system and I was, and, and I'm putting, and I'm being authentic and vulnerable and, you know, and realizing that like, God, you know, I, I may not be as good at writing a book that as, as I am at writing hypnosis scripts, you know, I've been mm -hmm. doing that for, for many, many years. And I know that I'm good at that, but it took, I, if I look back on some of my original, uh, hypnosis scripts, I mean, they were like, they were too long and too wordy and just, you know, too much. And so mm -hmm. I sort of had the same kind of idea when I wrote the book, I kind of thought, oh, you know, maybe this isn't. And every time I've, every time I've done anything uh, for the first time, um, I didn't really expect it necessarily to be perfect. You know, I mean, like you want to, and you strive for that perfection, but you know, that somebody's going to be able to poke some holes in it somewhere. Like, cause there's, you know what, cause there's, there's actually no such thing as perfection. And I think right. that's the thing that so many people are trying to live up to this idea of perfection and the same thing when it comes to, you know, manifesting and law of attraction, you know, you're not going to hit a home run every single time when you go out to try to manifest something, you're just not because of here, here's the thing you're manifesting all the time, but you're, you're still doing, you're doing it unconsciously. Right. You know, um, I was I was thinking when you were talking, uh, you said the word practice, and I think that's that's something so important for us to think about. Is instead of just thinking of all these things, but you know, making everything so serious, what about if you're just practicing? Like that that young lady that wanted to do the the the, the makeup tutorials on YouTube. Why not just make it practice? It doesn't have to be. You know, I mean, later on, once you get really good, you can delete them all if you want all those, <laughs> or you can actually show other young ladies, hey, look, this is where I started. You yes. know, because I had to start here. And I think it's it's just too bad that we're just not willing to practice enough. You know, we want to be we want to be great at it, or we're not going to do it at all, and then we end up not doing anything. You know, that is a really really good point. I think that that would be a, a way to really take the pressure off and realize that everything that we are doing. Um, I mean, when, when we talk about, um, any type of profession, you know, a practice, it's a practice that practice, yeah. it's called a practice for a reason. Cause we're always practicing and practice makes perfect. <laughs> perfect does, practice right? makes perfect. But I think the term perfect is still a little bit far-fetched because even yeah. if we are practicing all the time. I don't, I, I kind of think that there isn't any such thing as perfect. Yeah. You know, I like what Richard Nongard says in his class on, you know, getting a book published is um, published is perfect. Published. And, yes. 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 And so instead of striving for this, and, and like he says too, there's always going to be one of your chapters that is worse than every other one. You know, so so stop sweating it. There's going to be one that that's not as good as the rest. Um, but and but also I think with anything, you know, it's think of that. Um, you know, um, published is perfect. So just completing something, whether it's a video or a book or whatever, just getting it done is perfect. That's that's what you need to do is get things done, and move on to the next thing. Do your Absolutely. best. I mean, don't just don't just haphazardly put it together, but but get something out there into the world. And and the feedback, like you said earlier, that's what's really valuable because you may look at that and go, hmm. How could I make this more fun? You know, do I need more pictures? <laughs> do I need to include some color crayons with those pictures? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So let's let's talk about like we've 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 unpacked a lot when it comes to like these things that we as professionals can let dictate our mood and our attitude and our feeling and and that can 
can really ruin the day, you know, and, and to, and cause you to have a bad day. So like, what is our key takeaway here? I want to say our key takeaway for this and what you can do is number one, uh, we have to recognize that there is no such thing as perfection. Right. Absolutely. There's no, no such thing as perfection. And I think we can really validate that point to ourselves and, and find evidence out in the world by like looking, you know, if, if you're an author, uh, look at, look at books that have been like, f- not just self-published because like mine is self-published and, um, you know, and you can make a lot more, there's a lot more room for error. I think, uh, when you're a self-published versus going sure. to, to a, a pub, but if you even go to a fully published book by a fully published Hay House type author or whatever, you're going to find mistakes in those books. Like right. I've, I've, I'm like, Whoa, did I actually hear a mistake? Um, by mm-hmm. I can't even remember who it was, but you know, it was a fully published. So it, when you realize that, you know, and, and these are like fully published authors, you know, so they make mistakes. And so if it's okay for them to mistake, to make mistakes, somebody that you look up to, if it's okay for them to make mistakes, then it's okay for you to, too. And, you know, so not, no one gets it right a hundred percent of the time. And I think that one, that in and of itself can just open up a whole new, feeling for you to realize, you know what I can, and you know, I can, I can, I can be human and, and to be human is, is to err. And, and that will help, I think, just take the pressure off. Um, so that, that would be one of my first takeaways, um, for today. I would say the second, the second takeaway is also just to realize, um, that it's all feedback. You know, it's all, everything that when the world reflects back to you, something that you didn't really see or, or, or want to see in your, in your, your, your work or yourself or whatever you're putting out there, all of that reflection, all of that negative reflection is just you don't have to look at it necessarily as a negative thing. It's just feedback. It's really just something that um, if, if we are in this world of developing ourselves and, you know, to me, I, I believe law of attraction and manifestation is just um, the world reflecting back to us, whatever we're putting out there. Uh, So if we want better results in our lives, then we need to be better. (laughs) And so these are just opportunities for us to, um, to grow ourselves and, and to, so the, what we're putting out there is reflecting more of what we want. Yes, absolutely. I I couldn't agree more. Um, And, and remembering that we, that, you know, we're a work in progress. We're, we're all just, you know, we're on the road. Until, until we're dead, right? We're hopefully getting better or we're getting worse or one or the other. Yeah, yeah. And no one has, no one has cornered, you know, this thing called perfection. It's, it just doesn't exist and it's unreasonable and it's unrealistic to, uh, to seek, you know, that perfect, you know, I mean, if, if you get enough, you put yourself out there enough, yeah. you're going to get, you know, the more you put yourself out there, the more you're going to, um, you know, see areas where you can fine tune. And yeah. there's not a, there's not a book out there on the market and just looking at it from a book standpoint, but from yeah. any other type of where people there's user feedback, um, and, 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 People are telling us how we should feel about our work and who we are. Um, there's not, I don't think there's, there's anything out there that is like over when you get to over a hundred reviews on anything, you know, your margin for error is going to start to increase the more people are you expose yourself to. So, <laughs> you know, you have to 
is, you know, I think it really requires you to kind of have some, some, um, some thick skin and, you know, like, look at, look at all the, the, you know, the Tony Robbins and the Oprah Winfrey's and the, you know, the people, they put themselves out there, but not everybody likes them. <laughs> They're not for remember, everyone. You know, that's the thing to remember too. And this is so important. I always try to remind myself of this is you're never going to be perfect for everyone. Yeah. And, and I'll give you a great example. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to throw myself under the bus here. We'll probably get some hate emails about this, uh -huh. but there's a book out there that everybody it seems in the world thought was just phenomenal, just a breakthrough. Um, it's called the four agreements. Oh, and I read yeah. that book going, going, duh, no kidding. Be honest. You know what, whatever. I was like, what's the big deal here? And it was, it didn't move me at all. And, um, and everybody else in the world seemed to love that book. So uh, really you can't be perfect for everyone. You know what you're, that's a perfect demonstration. I mean, cause you and I don't definitely don't see eye to eye on that, but I appreciate, <laughs> I know I a hundred percent appreciate your point of view on that because you know, it, it's going to resonate with some people and it's not going to resonate with others. And I think that's exactly what happened with the review that I got on, on my book, you know, today. I mean, like it, it, I think it just depends on what your, what your needs are and what you're looking for at that time. And, you know, and, and again, I mean, there's nothing wrong with you that, that you didn't like that book and there's nothing wrong with the author that that didn't move you. And, you know, and I think that's, that's a really interesting way to, um, you know, to really get that not everyone or everything is for everyone and, you know, and, and not like, it's not perfect for everyone. And so that's a, that's a really, really great analogy there. Um, and then I think the third point, the third takeaway from, from today, what we can really gather is that um, to, to when we are looking at what's wrong and we're looking at what, we're, you know, all oh, this bad review, all oh, this bad conversation that I had with my developer, oh, this bad other situation that I'm dealing with you know, is to like, when we're focused on that, um, and we're, lo and we're looking at that, you know, um, through this, 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 you know, we're, we're, we're looking at how bad that's making us feel. I think what we have to do again, is we just have to be able to pull ourselves away from this real, um, amplified moment and kind of look at the big picture and really ask ourselves that, is it always that way? You know, it's almost like an NLP thing where, um, you know, sometimes we have a tendency to just like look at the bad and, and like, and generalize something as like, oh, it's, you know, this is the worst, you know, and, and just, you know, we get so absorbed in that really one bad moment. And so we want to just pull away and look at that situation a lot, lot more um, objectively and look at the balance between the negative and the positive, because you're not always, you can't have a hundred percent of the time. You can't have a um, hundred percent positivity all of the time. So occasionally, you know, you do get these little negative things and they, they teach you to like, look at the positive. They teach you to be grateful. They teach you to improve. They teach you like that, you know, we're, we're just constantly a work in progress. Yeah. And you know, the, um, like we talked about, I mean, the more you put yourself out there, the bolder you are, um, the more negative feedback you're going to get. And you're just going to have, I mean, you can either you can either just suck that up and just go with it, or you can just cower away and not produce anything. And that's really, those are really the choices, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, this has been honestly just kind of a organic conversation just because I wanted to discuss the fact that like Jim had started off talking about the beginning that, you know, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves and, you know, especially in the world of social media where everyone looks like they've got it all together. And I got to tell you, I don't care if you're a law of attraction teacher 
who, you know, I mean, I've, <laughs> I know many of them and I know like even myself, I mean, we don't all have it together and we're not always a hundred percent manifesting 100% of what we want. We're manifesting based on kind of our vibe, but it's a practice and you're going to get better at manifesting and working with, and I, you know, kind of get trying to get away from the, the, the word using the law of attraction. Cause it's not like we're using it, you know, it's sort of using us, <laughs> oh. you know, it's, it's really, we are, um, we are attracting all the time without even necessarily being aware that, that that's what we're doing. And so, um, this is always just feedback and it's always just taking a look at, okay, what's, you know, what's not working and looking at that in a positive way and using that as fuel to make ourselves even better. And, um, and, and also just recognizing that, you know, it's we're always, always, always going to be a work in progress. You know, I think I was just thinking too, like if we all were already perfect, then wouldn't it be boring to finish out our lives? <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. It's okay. You're they're going to have bad days. And, and, you know, in, in terms of the law of attraction, it's just also recognizing that you don't want to stay stuck there. You don't want to keep dwelling on like, Oh, this is so bad. This is so bad. This was so bad because you're going to be um, if you're in that thought process, you're in that feeling, you're in that vibe, that's what you're putting out there. And so just recognizing and just take the feedback and know that like, okay, that's where I was. That's, you know, okay. And I'm going to learn from that and I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep improving. And um, so with that said, I think, um, you know, my, you know, my, my, uh, my request of you as, as the audience is to really take a look at those areas where, you know, you're feeling a little bit like you're comparing yourself to, um, people you think have it all together and, and to, you know, just remember that, you know, you are a work in progress. They are a work in progress. We're all a work in progress and to, um, you know, not put so much pressure on yourself to, um, you know, to be perfect, um, to grow from those experiences, to learn and to, um, you know, just to, and to continue to put yourself out there, not let those things detour you from, making the most out of who you are. Cause you know, we all have special gifts to share and, um, we all are here. I think we can all, um, uh, make a, a huge positive difference and make the world a better place. Absolutely. So thank you guys so much for listening to the power of your mind podcast this week. And, um, please send your feedback. Uh, let us know how you're enjoying the show um, and we will see you next week.